Welcome back to a brand new episode of Mastering Programming. In this episode, we are creating this very simple VLOOKER code here that allows you to enter anything like a name. And once you click submit, it will basically move you to another page and it will actually navigate or move that information with you to the second page as well. This is using browser storage. So we'll be saving this and you can even refresh this. And this information that the user entered will actually be saved on the session browser or the session storage. If you wanna learn this, please continue watching and let's get started. Welcome back guys. So as you can see here, uh, straight away, I've created page one and page two. And basically what we wanna do is that we wanna create a text field here or an input where someone can write their name, for example, and a button. Once we click on the button, we're going to save that information and actually navigate to page two where we will be able to actually see the stuff that we saved. So A, this will show you how to save things and also how to move information or data from one page on Wix to the other page. So the first thing I'm going to start by doing is I'm obviously just going to go to the plus button, the add one. I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to scroll down until I can see input. I'll then select anything here and I'll just select this text field. And basically you can store or pass information, anything you can, whether it's a te usually text or like an array or a list or anything like that. And I'll also go ahead and add my button. Now I'm not going to focus too much about design or anything like this. I'm only just going to show you how we can actually do it. So obviously what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the text here from saying button to instead say submit. And maybe here we can just leave it as enter your name. That's actually pretty uh, good. Now before anything and before I continue, I just want to show you that I got this information from this page over here and basically we've got three different types of storage that we can use of browser storage. We first have local session and memory. For the local, basically the local storage never expires even if the site visitor closes your page. So basically let's say you want to save some information like the user's device or anything like that and you never want it to expire even if they close the browser or anything, it will still be saved. You will need to use local. Session, and that's the one I'm going to be using. They all actually be used exactly the same, but basically for the session, it's available as long as this page is on. So as you can see here, data in session storage is available while the visitor's web session is active. So once I end the, the browser tab or window, once I close it, it will be removed. And this is helpful if, for example, I'm buying up or I want, my, I want to check or I want to pass what products did my customers buy and move it into a separate page. I obviously don't want to show what they bought last time. I just want it to be like a car. So I'll only display it as the website is on. Once they close it, it will no longer be saved. Memory on the other hand is a little bit different. So this is as long as the user does not refresh the website. So it will save it. But once someone refreshes or reloads the page, it's completely gone. Now let's go ahead and actually start applying this stuff. Again, like I mentioned, we're going to be using import session from so storage. So we're going to be using this one. Uh, but as you can see, we do have some examples here and they're all, they're all honestly just exactly the same. So let's go ahead and start by doing so. I'm going to go back to the editor over here. And what I'm going to do is obviously make sure that my dev mode is turned on. So I'm going to hover over dev mode. And mine is already on, but if yours is not on, you can simply just click on turn on dev mode. I'm going to click over here. And what I need to do first is first import Wix storage. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to say import. And then inside of here, remember, we are not going to be using uh, local. We're going to be using session session. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to type in session and then I'll say from and here we can say wix dash storage. There we go. So we're basically just following this exactly the same. Now, now it comes to actually submitting or saving something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over the button or click on it, sorry. And then I'll click on click and let's just say save um, and move. So that's going to be the name of our file or of our function, save and move. And basically, once someone clicks on this button, we want to do two things. A, we want to store that information. So we want to store whatever the person entered here. And then we want to move. So we want to navigate to page two. So let's go ahead and do this. 
As soon as we come here, what I'm going to be doing, as soon as someone clicks here, first, let's say let username is equal to that input. So I'm going to say dash, and then it's basically, we're basically going to be capturing whatever the user says here. So I'm going to say it's equal to input one dot text. Uh, sorry, dot value. There we go. Next, what I want to do is I want to save that value. So I'm going to simply say, and this is exactly how it gets done for local uh, or memory or storage or session, sorry. All I'm going to be doing is the following. I'm going to say let value, oh, sorry. Uh, I can just simply just say session dot set item. And now we're going to be doing two things. We want to save it under a specific name. Think of it as if you're creating a name, uh, a name for a file. So I'm going to say username, and then we actually pass in that value that we're saving. In our case, it's username, which we actually saved at the top over here. And believe it or not, this is it. This is how simple this whole thing is. Now, let's say you wanted to use local or anything like that. You'll be replacing this line at the top here with whichever one you want to use and then you're just going to reference it just how I referenced it over here. Beautiful, so this works. Now let's actually learn how to display this information in page 2. So I'm going to go click on page 2 over here and we're now in page 2 and I'm going to click on the add and I'm just going to drag any header honestly, just this one. There we go. Something like this. And now, um, again, I'm going to be importing, oops, sorry. I'm going to be importing the session. So I'm going to say import, and then I'll say session from weeks-storage, just like this. Beautiful. And we want to do this as soon as the page loads. So I'm going to remove this. And inside of my on ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be saying let value equal to session dot get item and inside of here we're going to pass that exact same name that we passed earlier so i think it was username and if you're confused i'm basically referring to this let it load i'm referring to this the name of this field so i'm going to copy it i'm going to go back it has to be the same otherwise it will just not work and i'll replace it so see i almost did what it wrong and after we have it, we can simply pass it to our text here. So I'm going to put a dollar sign and then I'm going to say input, uh, sorry, text. And what is it? Text 80. Okay. So text 80. Text 80. And, oh, I was missing a hashtag sign. Dot text is equal to value. Okay, beautiful. So now this should be working, except we didn't actually set it so that once we click on the button, we go to page two. So let's go ahead and just do that. I'm going to publish this and I'm going to go over here. Sorry, at the very top. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type in import Wix location from Wix location. And this will allow me to basically go over here and I can say something like Wix location dot two and then pass in the url of the second page so let's go to our website and i'm gonna go right now and capture the url of that second page so i'm going to click on page two and i'm going to copy the url i'll go back and i'll pass that inside of here and i think i just it just needs to be inside of quotation marks there we go. Okay, that should work. That should work. So let's go ahead and publish this. I'm going to go back to the website. I'm going to go to page one. And let's just go ahead and refresh this just to be safe. And now we can basically save our name. So I'm going to be saying David Bullis. Let's go ahead and submit this. And as you can see, it works. So it did move that information from the first page to my second page and the best thing about this is because I'm using the storage of the current session I can even refresh this and it will still 
be available. But if I close this page and then reload it again or like come to the same website, now it won't be available. Remember, make sure you use whichever one suits your case. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you do leave a like and a subscribe.